Thank you, Steve. Three years ago, we started what we called the new season. And uh, as Steve said, I'm with you and I will continue to be with you to finish this important work. So today I want to be clear that my commitment is firm. I am here and I will be here. And I, as I told my board, I am available to support this community because we don't come and visit this community and leave. We become part of this family. So thank you for welcoming me for the last three years and I will be with you. But now let's look at the next year ahead because we have a lot of work to do. Today, I'm going to focus on three important areas we are focused on. We must continue to improve ICANN to make sure it is ready for the transition. And we continue to support you, our community, to do your work. And finally, I will cover some topics related to the bonds with our technical community. But first, how do we continue to improve ICANN? Four main areas have been our core focus to get ready for this important transition. First, we must strengthen our multi-stakeholder community and make sure everything we do is driven by that. We must stabilize our operations and make sure they are sustainable for the future, remain transparent and accountable, and globalize everything we do. Many, many activities are going on in this area. I'm going to focus on a few this morning. Let me start by mentioning the L route in Argentina. On June 9th of this month, we added an L route instance in Argentina with our partners at Nick AR. I want to just remind us what the CEO of Nick AR said today. One, they have switched to a focused multi stakeholder national model. Our commendations on that move. That is fantastic. Because multi-stakeholderism is not global. It's also at home. It's local. In fact, it starts at home. So thank you for doing that and for the DNSSEC. And certainly now, as we worked with you to get the L Root instance here this month ahead of this meeting, thank you for your help on that. And we're glad to work with you on it. Uh, the second area I want to mention, which you've seen in a beautiful, for me, beautiful, 11 and a half minute video from the Minister of ICT in India. You know that when we started this journey a few years ago, this community was constantly uh, defending itself from people who believe that the work we do should be elsewhere, should be centralized elsewhere. And we worked very hard to expand the support of multi-stakeholder governance from the G7 to the G20. The G20 represent more than 80% of the population of the world. And today, with India joining this group of countries that openly support the multi-stakeholder model, we increase our ranks significantly. The decision that was made by India is a significant decision. And it was one that was not made in one ministry. It was made by His Excellency Prime Minister Modi in a cabinet meeting that included all the key ministries, including the Foreign Affairs Ministry. So that's a fundamental shift that we should acknowledge. And every one of you during this Buenos Aires meeting, when you meet Dr. Govind or other people from India, please go up to them and congratulate them. Because people like him, who for 20 years kept coming here in the hope that his own country will join, today he can celebrate, and we celebrate with you, Dr. Govan. So congratulations. <laughs> and now, I focus a little bit on some internal planning things. You have accompanied us on a journey to transform our planning system. And we built a world-class planning cycle that included first a five-year strategy that we built with you, bottom-up, never done it, never seen any corporation in the world or country develop an entire strategy, bottom-up, 
We did it together. And then we followed for the first time in ICANN's history by building a five-year operating plan that matches that five-year strategy that's also completed with input and work of the whole community that led to that plan. And this year is the first year we complete that semicircle where we deliver to you a yearly budget built on that five-year operating plan and linked to the five-year strategy. That FY16 operating budget, $113 million budget, will be approved in the public session on Thursday after all of us took our, your comments and made it a plan of this community. Now, this semicircle is good, but it is no good if we cannot track it and manage it together. It has to be measurable. And so we move to the achievement and progress reporting area. And here we do two things now. One we've done now for a year, and I want many of you to participate in this more and more to give us feedback, and that's the quarterly stakeholder call. We're using a very similar model that is adopted by first-class corporations around the world. They have shareholder calls. We have stakeholder calls, and these calls occur on a quarterly basis where we give you a full review of our operations, our financial work, our policy work, so that everyone gets informed at the same time. And we take questions also. So please join us for the next call, which is the 20th of August. Now, today I'm announcing a step further, because it's one thing to have a plan, it's another thing to have key performance indicators that are visible to you so you can check on our progress. So, on August 20th, we will introduce the new ICANN Key Performance Indicator or KPI dashboard. This is a public dashboard that you will all be able to go in and look at and work with and check on us. This beta version of the dashboard will look like this. The opening page will have our five objectives, which you've set in our strategic plan, and it will show next to each objective how are we doing. Now, let me focus on one to show you. I'll focus on the third one. And when you click on that, you'll be able to see under that objective what are the goals. In this case, the goal is to ensure ICANN's long-term financial accountability, stability, and sustainability. Below that goal are the key performance indicators for that goal. And for each of them, you will see the status of this. If you click on one of them, like the actual reserve fund, you will be able to get actual data, real-time data on how we're doing with that goal. We will have 22 KPIs to start and that cover all of our five objectives and all of our goals. I invite you to come and visit this page Go to ICANN.org slash progress and you will get information on the quarterly stakeholder calls and you will be able to access that dashboard starting on the 20th of August. And because it's a beta, we're improving it, it's still at the beginning, there will be an area for you to give us feedback and input so we can keep improving this dashboard. Let me go back to other things we're doing. You've heard my announcement a few days ago about energizing our internet technology organization. Our chairman reminded us at the beginning of this meeting that ICANN is a technical organization. And while he may think it's not sexy, uh, our two leaders may not agree with him. These are our two uh, new leaders for the internet technology area. You all know them. Are they here? Are you here, David and Adiel? Please stand up so everybody sees you. And they're sitting next to each other again. Here they are. Please stand up so everybody sees you. <laughs> Delighted to have this superb team to learn from and to advance the vision of ICANN, to enhance the collaboration with our technical community partners, to expand all of our technical exposure, which we need to do more on. And specifically, I want to call out the important role Adiel will play to strengthen the relationship we have with our technical community. Now, I'm going to pause here to make an important point, and I will admit that it took me a little bit of time to completely understand this point. As I was telling the board uh, in the last two days, 
it's taken me almost all these three years to get to a point where I feel like all the pieces of I can, I understand them now. But um, I'm leaving. But, uh, uh, <laughs> but it takes time. And this particular picture really speaks to a deep understanding that I'm happy to share with you today. I can is not responsible and does not run the logical infrastructure of the internet. I can does so as an equal partner with our colleagues in the technical operating community. The regional internet registries, the IETF, and ICANN with the IANA department, together with the top level domain operators, we are all together the community that coordinates and makes sure that this layer of the internet is secure, stable, and resilient. It's no one organization's role to run this. The strength of our model is that we have an interconnected set of organizations that are bound by common principles and by mutual commitments. This is what makes us strong and this is what will keep us strong after the transition. So let's not forget that. And I wanted to share this important characterization of the technical community that I now fully live and understand and I invite you to join me in that important understanding. Now, globalization, as the last area I want to touch on, is a project that was very central uh, to my agenda since I began at ICANN. Globalization is a journey. It is not a one-time event. And I'm not naive to believe that simply putting people around the world means we are global. When I was at IBM, we spoke of globalization in three layers, almost three stages. The first stage is the geographic stage, which means you can't say you're global running IBM from Armonk. You need to be all over the world. You need to be present. But that's not sufficient. The next thing you need to do, and today we have people in 30 countries, ICANN has people in 30 countries today. The next thing you have to do is to globalize the way you work, your processes, your systems, your approaches. So today I'm happy to inform you that after a very long year, we have now delivered on the ability of any stakeholder to call a local number in their country and reach ICANN 24 hours a day, five days a week. And not just in the UN languages, in all UN languages plus German, we add a German and we'll be adding other languages. And the access locally is with local numbers. And that's now all running from our three hubs. Remember we built Los Angeles, Singapore and Istanbul. These hubs are operating these service centers for us around the world. So when a user calls and issues uh, a, a request in Singapore, uh, if they call again at any time, if the Singapore team is at home with their family, the Istanbul team can answer 24 hours a day. We have people with the same issues on a common system. So that's already in place. The next thing we did was local, localizing what we do because a lot of our system has been based on the UN languages, but the reality is there are many people who our internet users who don't use the UN languages. So we started the project with our community to take some of our materials and make them work in local languages. And that project in the Asia Pacific region, with the great support of our friends in Korea initially, and thank you South Korea for your help in helping us figure out how to do this with the community. We now have in this region our materials, our key materials, in these languages and that project is now going to go global. We are deploying it around the world. That means we are getting closer to you, to our community and we're making sure we bring our materials to you and we listen to you locally as well. Today there will be a session about this project which will also show other communities how to adopt that toolkit we built. Please do uh, join us for that session. Now, this is what we've been doing and will continue to do to make ICANN ready for the transition. 
But now I want to talk to you about what's left. What is in the road ahead between now and the transition? First, without question, I join my chairman in recognizing the amazing work you have done to get us to this point. And yesterday, in a joking way, I was telling governments, watch this and go tell your colleagues around the world that the multi-stakeholder model works. It's incredible what you've done. The amount of effort that you've put to get ready for this transition is unprecedented. And it's not just the technical community or just civil society. It's all of us, plus governments, involved in a true, bottom-up, massive, multi-stakeholder effort. It is unprecedented. And the results are global and real. I want to thank you all for your commitment. When we hear that Cheryl calls from an operating room, uh, I've heard stories about the work that has gone in this. I've heard of someone involved in this work who slept on her keyboard and her head pushed her delete key. And so when she woke up, she had to undelete 200 some messages to get back to continue her work. People have put enormous effort to make this multi-stakeholder effort go, and thank you. Thank you all for this effort. It will be recorded in history. Now, in this last line of work, I propose to you we'll have three phases. The first phase that we're living right now will lead us to the multi-stakeholder community delivering a proposal to the U.S. government. That is an important completion of your work, of our work. Once that proposal is delivered, we go into phase two. Phase two, as Mr. Strickling said yesterday, will last four to five months. Larry was explaining that during these four to five months, there will be a period of review, which will involve the community and many members of the U.S. government, at the end of which, at the end of which, Mr. Strickling and NTIA will need to deliver a certification. Now, this is going to become law soon, but it's almost law that the U.S. Congress will pass a law that Mr. Strickling will need to deliver a certification confirming two things. One, that the proposal has met the criteria that NTIA has set out to all of us. I think we all know we will meet these criteria. And we will make sure when we deliver the end of phase one that we clarify that we have met these criteria. We hope he will agree with us, but we'll do our part, and I'm sure he will respond accordingly. The second thing Mr. Strickling will do is to confirm that the bylaw changes required from this proposal have been adopted. And therefore, you see that red line at the bottom, where the ICANN community and board will work towards implementing the bylaws, pardon me, towards adopting the bylaws in time before the white line, which is the point NTIA gives Congress a certification letter. Now, after NTIA delivers the certification letter, the law that Congress is right now going to pass requires 30 legislative days during which Congress can also review the certification. 30 legislative days. For those of us who are not close to Washington, these are not 30 weekdays, these are not 30 calendar days, these are 30 days Congress is in session. Typically it's 45 to 60 days. That's what it is, but again, we don't know because the congressional calendar is not out for 2016. So, this is phase two. At the end of phase two, the review of our proposal is finished. We're done. What's left then would be 
whatever is left of implementation, which brings me to phase three. Phase three is the phase that will end with the transfer of stewardship from the US government to us. That's when the contract will lapse. Now, leading up to phase three, we're going to start activities of operationalizing and implementing the proposal. Notice that line, the red line, starts kind of sort of now. We're not going to wait till then. And you heard NTIA yesterday clearly say there are three different things that could be implemented. And two of these, and you can go back to the record to read Mr. Strickling's notes, two of these could start now. And we will work together, community and NTIA, to figure out what could start now so we don't wait till phase three to start implementation. And that is a commitment from us. Now, that implementation, when it ends, will get us to this point. Now, all of you, I hope, appreciate these three important phases. The question is, when? Now, it's not for me to decide when or for the board. It's for you. So I have gone and asked our community leaders, our working group leaders, what are your timelines? What are you looking at right now? When will these things be ready? So I'm today going to report to you on the messages I got back from them. The first is that phase one could end in Dublin around ICANN 54. This is important. Phase one could end in Dublin. Now, we may be a week, too late, a month late. I think we could, we could work with that. But in general, the community feels that around Dublin, we should be done with phase one. Now, the middle phase is clear. It's four to five months. And the community is now working to respond to NTIA on the end of phase three. But when I asked our community leaders, based on your plans and what you're seeing and what you know today, when could that finish? The answers that are coming back to us seem to indicate that by ICANN 56, which will be back in Latin America in the middle of 2016, a year from today, the contract with the U.S. government could come to an end. The only way this will happen is when we deliver on our work. So today, we should not be busy with phase two and phase three. We should be focused on getting phase one done, our work. The end of phase one, I call it a triumph of the multi-stakeholder model. Of course, end of phase three is important, but for us, the part we are all doing together is phase one. So you, us, together, we are going to make this phase happen. Let's stay focused. Let's remain confident. Let's remain united so that we can lead this internet to be secure, stable, resilient, but also independent. Thank you.